Oh, and we are live and recording. And I'd like to welcome everybody to CRAP Conversations with Rotary Action People. And today we have two folks who are going to talk to us about the Saratoga War Horse Program, Abby Gant and Steve Houghton. I'd like to welcome both of them. Abby, Steve, thank you so much for coming on today. I'll uh, just read a quick bio and uh, then we'll turn it over to them for, I'm sure, a very interesting and entertaining day. So Steve was born and raised in upstate New York. He joined the Army in 1996 as a radio operator. After training, he was assigned to numerous units and several combat deployment overseas. After 20 years of service, he retired as a Sergeant First Class as a Senior Telecommunications Operations Chief in November 2016. Then he shortly after participated in the Saratoga War Horse Program in Aiken, South Carolina. Currently lives in Wagner, South Carolina as the program advisor for Saratoga War Horse. Abby is a United States Coast Guard veteran, enlisting in 2008 and becoming a boatswain's mate. And uh, oh, then she is a 2001 graduate of the inaugural class of the South Carolina Governor's School for the Arts and Humanities, where she majored in music, playing the flute. She attended the University of South Carolina, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts in Music with a Cognate Education in 2007. She uh, currently resides in Wagner on a small farm and is pursuing a second bachelor's degree in marketing. She is a veteran intake coordinator for Saratoga Warhorse. Warhorse. So uh, I'd like to turn it over to Abby and Steve. If you will wanna go ahead and share your screen, we'll start. All right. Perfect. Here we go. Okay, so we are Saratoga Warhorse. Uh, we offer a three-day program, uh, which offers camaraderie, community, connection, um, and we do everything confidential through the veterans. Um, we serve veterans. Um, it's, we, it's at no cost to them, so we'll pay for our flight, hotel room, and meals. Um, we'll fly them from anywhere in the United States or its territories. Uh, there's no deployment or service connected disabilities required to attend. Um, we're not alternative. We are an alternative program. Uh, it's a low pressure environment and it's an experiential process with a horse and it's not therapy, but it's definitely very therapeutic. Abby, excuse me. Did you uh, try to share your screen? Because we don't see anything. Oh, huh. let me. OK, nope, that's record. We're not recording. Close. Your screen. screen it was there before there you go. is it back now yeah, yeah it's okay. back go ahead and all right sorry about that show. there you go there we go okay um so we call it a three-day pro uh, program but it's really just one full day with a travel day on each end um so on day one you would arrive uh, if we fly you in we'd have one of our staff members pick you up from the airport and they would take you to on the hotel and you have a hotel room to yourself. Um, and then that evening you would meet and go to dinner with your class and our staff. Um, we cap our classes at six people. So it's a small um, intimate process. It's not a large, you know, share your feelings and talk about a lot of uncomfortable things. Um, it's not like that at all. Um, so dinner just gets you comfortable with your class and our staff. Um, day two is uh, the one full day. So in the morning you would be um, in the classroom Oh, you do a farm tour and then you'd be in the classroom. And then that afternoon you would have your connection with your horse, which is the real meat and potatoes of what we do. And then that third day uh, would just be breakfast at the hotel. And then we um, would take the participants back to the airport or they would you know, uh, depart from there. Um, the day at the farm, um, it begins with a lecture in the classroom. You do a nonverbal exercise. Uh, horses are nonverbal. So um, that just kind of gets you thinking about how horses kind of interact with each other. Um, there's Abby, a lecture. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt again. Could you switch it into the slideshow mode at the top? I don't, I don't think it took. Try it again. Okay. All right. There you go. Excellent. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, so they do that lecture. Uh, about uh, the behaviors of the horse and exercises that are going to be doing later that day. Um, and then we feed the veterans some lunch. Um, and then after lunch, we put them into the round pen, 
um, and let them do uh, practice exercises with each other to kind of see what it will be like when you get your horse in the pen with you. Um, and while they're doing that, uh, our staff is selecting, you know, which horses we use um, to go with which veterans, um, trying to, you know, fill out um, personalities and, and thinking about how they're going to make the best connection. Um, and then after that, they're going to have their individual round pin sessions with the veteran and their their thoroughbred racehorse. Um, and that's the big connection that we're talking about. Um, and then when they come out of their connection, uh, we take pictures. They're usually loving on their horse. And then we give them time to just bond with their horse and, and just, you know, far, further that connection. Um, and then after everybody makes their connection, uh, there's a debrief in the classroom to just talk about what happened and kind of process you know, how their connections happened and, and what everybody saw from everyone else's connections. Um, and then after that, um, the staff takes them out to dinner and then that usually continues the debrief. And the, uh, the difference between dinner the first night and dinner the second night is usually night and day for the veterans. They're so much more comfortable and it's, it's just an amazing experience. Um, the lecture is designed to empower the veteran to work through several trust building exercises, uh, working with the response of the horse. And the goal of that is to enable an experiential connection process between the off the track thoroughbred racehorse and the veteran. So why do we use a thoroughbred? Um, they, the thoroughbred it mirrors the life of a veteran. So um, thoroughbreds are highly trained and specialized to run fast and turn left, you know, um, from the time that they're born, they're kept in stables and that's what they're trained to do. Um, they're highly restricted. Their, their lives are very structured. They don't really get time to be themselves and really learn how to horse, you know, uh, they, they just, that's their job is to run fast and turn left. Um, so the transition for them when they are retired is uh, it's not consistent and there's no definition. So they're, they're not on a strict regimen anymore. Um, oh, I went too far. They're not on a strict regimen anymore. They're kind of turned out into a pasture and they've never really had that experience before. Um, and their racing career can end anywhere from ages two to three to four, um, or even at 10 years old. And thoroughbreds live to be 30 plus years old. So they have really the rest of their lives to kind of figure out, oh, what am I? I gonna do and they you know veterans are the same exact way um, when we get out of the service there's always that panic feeling of what do I do now I've been told what to do for x amount of years and so how do I process this and how do I live my best life so to speak um, so the connection process once that begins um, we essentially hand the veterans a horse and say here you go um, so this is a veteran walking into a pen with a horse and they're about to start their connection so they walk in and they're going to orient, orient to the horse into the pen. So they're going to move them at 12 o'clock, um, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and then back up to 12 o'clock and kind of let them see their surroundings. And they're going to give them little pets and nudges while they do that, just to show them like, look, this is okay. Nothing scary is going to happen. And then once they get done with that, they're going to let them go. And the horse is going to take off and start doing laps around the round pen, um, which um, it's, I don't know if you guys have ever seen horses take off and run like that, but it is crazy. And when they're doing it in a round pen around you, it is a little overwhelming. Um, so they'll let the horse do that and kind of get their, uh, their excitement out and run out some feelings. And, and eventually the horse is going to kind of calm down and start to tune in to the veteran that's in the middle of the pen. Um, and when that happens, the horse will eventually walk over and they're going to come over and do what we call a horse handshake. So um, the veteran will invite them in, the horse comes over and they're going to nudge your hand with their, with their nose. And that's them saying, okay, this is fine. I, I accept you. Um, so once they do that, um, they get to bond. Um, we ask them to do a figure eight. So the veteran walks on a figure eight pattern and um, the horse follows them just like a puppy dog would. It, it's kind of crazy how it works, but um, the, the, bonding, the bonding permission is granted and bonding looks different for everybody. So here you have, you know, her head is nestled into this horse and horses have this ability to just take what you're feeling and just remove it from you for a minute and just let you be, you know, I, I, I'm, it's hard to put into words exactly how, how it works and how well it works. Um, 
And so every, it looks different for everybody. So here's, you know, someone who's very happy and very excited about it. And, um, you know, and it can get very emotional as well. And you can see, you know, in the horse's face and the veteran's face, they're both feeling something that is just this emotional bond. Um, so this is, um, in short, what we offer, it's really hard to put into words um, exactly how um, connecting a racehorse and a veteran is as powerful as it is, but it really is a once in a lifetime experience. Um, it's, an, it's an amazing program. And these are just different pictures of, you know, experiences through the veterans and the horses. And that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was very short and very quick, but that was a pretty impressive photos. That really was. <laughs> um, I had a couple of questions. Um, folks, if you'll put your questions in the chat, we'll go ahead and go through those for Abby and Steve. Um, First question I have is how do the veterans sign up for this type of a program? What um, do they learn about it? So to sign up for the program, um, they would email or call me. Um, my email is abby, A-B-B-Y, at saratogawarhorse.org. Uh, my phone number is 518-531-3019. Uh, um, I, um, I talk to anybody that I never tire of talking about this program. Um, so... <sighs> Um, that's how you sign up. We have we have dates for our Maryland location. That's where we're currently operational. Um, I'm seeing some chats come in now, so I'm going to try to catch them all. Um, let's see. So our funding, uh, we're a nonprofit, so we're completely funded by private donations. Um, like I said, we're it's at no cost to the veterans. So if they drive to the location, that they submit their gas receipts and we pay them back. Um, if they check a bag, we pay them back for that. I mean, anything anything that costs to attend our program, we take care of it. And so that's, money is not an, uh, gonna be a worry for them to attend our program. Um, let's see, I see, where do you get the horses and where are they kept? So our horses, uh, they come from um, a uh, thoroughbred rescue, it's called Foxy G. Um, they donate the horses to our location in Maryland where they're kept on site. We use the agricultural, the Baltimore County Agricultural Center, um, and they have a groundskeeper and a horsekeeper, uh, barn manager there that takes care of them. Um, and when the horses get to be to the point where they kind of expect what to happen in the pen, uh, we um, give them back to the rescue where they get adopted out and we get a, a fresh set of horses so that everyone's bonding experience looks a little bit different. Um, and these thoroughbred racehorses are some of the most adoptable horses um, in the rescue community because they, they feel those connections and they have those experiences and they know, you know, how to be around humans and that they're not gonna, these humans are not gonna treat them like their race managers did, you know? Um, let's see. I'm trying to um so uh leon uh, we don't require you to have pts um pts or any kind of service connected uh disability um to qualify for a program you either have to have served or be currently serving in the military um and that's that's really it so um our program is different than a lot of other veteran programs where they do require that you have deployments or you have some kind of disability we don't require that at all uh, we feel like um, anyone who served you didn't come back the same person. Um, and that doesn't have to be necessarily a bad thing, but it is a lot to process to, you know, give yourself to your country and miss so much of life and, and kind of worry about where you're going to fit in that we don't close off our program to, to anybody that served. Um, so we don't, um, the follow-up programs to see how veterans are doing, um, we don't offer a follow-up program, but we do um, follow-up surveys to kind of see how veterans are doing and we do um, connections with them all the time so I, I feel phone calls all the time from veterans who went through that just a they want to see if they can come back which unfortunately it's a one-time only experience because we you know we're funding veterans to come through so we have to allocate that money you know for one time only um, but it's cool to see veterans and, and how they change and 
and, um, you know, kind of do life after going through our program. Um, let's see, does the veteran ever get to see the horse again? So in a lot of, a lot of situations, they don't, uh, depends on where they live. Um, if they're local to one of our locations, then they can, um, you know, certainly go visit the horse. Um, but sometimes it's just a one-time experience um, and, they and they don't see their horses again. Um, is the program advertised at various other veteran organizations? Um, so it is. So we try, we try to get our um, uh, information out to um, VA hospitals, um, Walter Reed, um, other veteran organizations. Um, but it's usually um, word of mouth. So we're a small organization. We have five employees. Um, so um, it's usually word of mouth and um, scheduling is usually done through someone who attended class and tells their friends, hey, I did this class and it's really amazing and, and you should go. Um, give Abby a call and she'll put you into a class. Yeah, the majority is uh, fielded through, you know, Facebook and stuff like that, where um, a veteran has went through, experienced, and then they share the information on their um, their Facebook page or other groups and pages that they're affiliated with through their, you know, local um, VFWs, American Legions, or whatnot. Um, let's see. I can read these to you without you having to go down and trying to figure it out. Uh, okay. One, the next question is like, how was it started? Who started this? How did it come about? So it was started uh, back in uh, 2000, 2013 um, from a guy, a Vietnam veteran. He was a, um, a medevac helicopter pilot in Vietnam. And when he came back, um, he, you know, he came back and he wasn't the same. So he found therapy and, and um, the way he dealt with society after he got back was through horses. Um, and so that's how he, you know, over the years, um, after being a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, he went on to be a commercial airline uh, pilot. And then after retirement from it, you know, he wanted to give back and, and set something up for the veterans. So um 20, 2023 will be our 10 year anniversary of Saratoga War Horse. So the next question is how much uh does it cost per veteran to run the program? So that part varies. Um so yeah, probably around 3000 per veteran it depends on you know if they're flying or driving um and the meals I mean the cost for staff for that but it, yeah, usually I think it evens out to about $3000 per veteran. Okay. Are there any plans for other locations or is this the only location? Um, so we in the past have had Aiken, South Carolina and Saratoga, New York. Uh, we're not currently operational in, in either of those locations. Um, COVID hit us pretty hard uh, as it did uh, everybody, I'm assuming. So, um, so we're currently not back up there. Um, I think we do expect to be back up in South Carolina before New York, but it's hard to tell a timeline with those, but um, usually it's the three locations that we offer. Yeah. So um, like the facility in Baltimore is a county run facility. So they get, um, you know, county money and, and all that stuff. So it's all paid for, you know, the care of the horses and everything like that is paid for by the county of uh, Baltimore County. Whereas in New York and South Carolina, um, you know, it was done at a, either a private farm or a rescue where COVID hit them hard as well. So funding for them um, to host us at a minimal cost, you know, is kind of tough. So we're currently looking for farms in, in both New York and here in Aiken, South Carolina. Um, you know, whether it's a partnership with a, a already farm owner that has thoroughbreds or we bring thoroughbreds in for them and then they take ownership and and then we use their farm with a, you know, on a contract and, you know, we'll pay the farm, whatever compensation is worked out. But um, that's where we're at right now with the, with the farm locations. So that leads me to how was the name developed? What, what exactly is a Saratoga war horse? So it was founded in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, that's where they get Saratoga from. And then um, racehorses are considered, you know, a war horse. I mean, they're 
they're out there getting it every day on the racetrack. So um, that's where it kind of is similar, you know, with the veteran community. There's a, also one in the chat, just verifying that that is the correct website, saratogawarhorse.org. I think that is because I did look at yes. it before. Yeah, that is correct. So I'm curious on uh, thoroughbreds, I think we all kind of think after a thoroughbred is through racing, they're put out to stud. They make millions of dollars with stud. <laughs> so apparently the thoroughbreds you're getting aren't necessarily the ones who have the genetics to do that. Is that right? Well, well so that's not entire. So the way it works is, you know, the racing industry, they breed over. Um, so back in the late, um, late eighties, early nineties, they used to breed over 40,000 thoroughbreds a year. Now we're, we're into about 20,000 thoroughbreds a year. So, um, and a lot of the horses are fixed. Actually, the, the males are gelded even on the racetrack. So before they even get to um, retirement, they're already gelded. So there's no more reproducing for them. Now, there are some that do race and they're stallions all the way through their career. And, you know, and if they're winning, you know, they're, if they have raced on seven years on the racetrack, obviously that's a really good horse. So bet all your money on them. And then <laughs> they do stud those horses out. Um, also, once they get um, the horses are retired and they go to a, a rescue, it's kind of just like um, uh, a dog rescuer or, or something like that. So once the horse gets there, then they will get gelded. So no more reproduction. So the person isn't adopting this horse for the wrong reason and to try to make money, you know. Um, so that kind of helps with the population and it helps with um, once the horse is done racing, that owner doesn't try to, you know, sell it off to the kill pen and, and things like that. So to make sure I understood the first part of this, you, you get the horse from a rescue farm and Correct. then you return the horse to a rescue farm after they've done the experiences with the veterans okay yes. right or or some of the rescues actually will adopt the horse out while we are using them for our program and then i mean that's a, a super good thing you know um so we we totally encourage that but they basically are on on loan to us gotcha Okay, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I have a question. Uh, one of the comments you made, Abby, was you said that after a couple of times you have to uh, trade the horse out. The horse gets used to the pattern of bonding with the human and then is no longer effective. Is that? Well, so what, what can happen sometimes is that the horses get really used to making those connections. And so they don't they don't go in there with their full excitement and, and do the, the exercises properly. And so it's not a proper bonding experience. They just know like, oh, that's my human and I'm going to go love on this human, um, which still does offer something to the veterans, but it's not the full experience. Gotcha. Um, so, we, you know, we don't we don't want it to seem like it's a rehearsed thing, you know, so then that horse would be um, sent back to the rescue and more than likely adopted out because it, it's so used to, you know, making those connections with humans and we would get a fresh horse to, um, you know, to, to help him open up or her. <laughs> so apparently there are plenty of fresh horses available at the various rescue farms. There are oh, plenty of thoroughbred race horses available. Yeah. Um, and some of these don't even, uh, make it to actually being a racehorse. Um, they don't, you know, they don't run fast enough or something happens and they're not healthy enough to, to actually race. So then at that point they've trained to do it. Um, and they just never do. So, but they still get the, you know, same treatment as, you know, the horse that won what $60,000 on, you know, on a track and then got retired at three years old. Cause he, you know, wasn't winning anymore. Or similar okay. experience with the veterans where, um, you know, you get a veteran to sign up for the for the navy and they want to do their 20 years and two years into it they get injured and then they have to be um you know medically, medically discharged from from the service uh same thing with horses you know um like abby said they either don't run fast enough they don't win their owners enough money so they get rid of them or they actually have an injury that prevents them from being a racehorse but that doesn't prevent them from going on to a secondary career where they could do, 
you know, um, trail riding, they could do dressage, they could do um, show jumping or something like that. Um, so that's what this program does for the veterans. As much as it helps the veterans, it's helping the horse at, at the exact same time. Okay. I see one other question. Terry, I'm not exactly sure I know what you mean here. Are you talking about what is the lot what is their life like while they're in the program, the horse? Um, I'll field it like it is that question. Um, so our horses in Baltimore live pretty awesome lives. Um, so they have a barn with um they have a stable to themselves. Um, and then they also get turned out into pastures where they can, you know, herd and kind of actually be horses. Um, but they they live pretty good lives in Baltimore. <laughs> Our barn manager takes really good care of them. Yeah, so the typical life uh, of a racehorse is, um, it, you could kind of picture it um, similar to what um, a prisoner would be, where they live in a, they live in a horse stall for uh, about 22 hours a day, and they're only taken out of the stall to go run around the track, you know, whether it's exercise or they're actually racing. So, once this uh, horse is retired and they get to one of our facilities or a rescue facility, they get put out into herds with other horses where they've never, the only time they're with another horse is actually on a racetrack. Um, so they get to be very social um, and just live a life of a horse. Like if you, if you picture on TV, like um, wild horses and how they live, that's how these horses would live on a day-to-day -day basis. They just get to be out out in the herd, do horse things, they get fed, um, and then they'll get bring, brought into the, uh, the stalls and, and such like the day prior or the day of the program so that they can, um, you know, get groomed, cleaned up and everything, and then we'll use them in our program. Okay, well, I think that's all the questions. I wanna thank you for a very interesting, very entertaining program. Um, and with that, Mary, I'll turn it over to you if you want to announce uh, the next couple of speakers. Thank you so much, Abby and Steve. Yeah. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Very good. Thank you for your and time. Thank you both for your service to our country. We really appreciate that. Um, a little side fact about Abby that you may not know, she bakes fabulous cakes. She's also <laughs> a baker. Had she to does. put that plug in for Captain Abby cakes. I mean, <laughs> I've not had one yet, but I'm going to the next family reunion. <laughs> oh, we'll fix that then. We'll yeah, fix we'll that. I'm looking fix forward it. to it. 